Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good, he's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon El Che, the living God who loves us with the true agape love. He wants to pour that love into our hearts and write that love on our minds and keep us in perfect peace. He wants to keep us in perfect peace because we, <laughs> because we love him, because we adore him. The Father who created the world and all that there is in it sent us his Son to deliver us from the power of sin, the darkness that is in the world, the, the chaos, the confusion, death. He's separated us from our sins by the blood of his own Son and given us life and peace. He's made us His righteousness. We have been made right with God through Jesus Christ, the Lord, and we trust Him. We trust God. How do you how do you trust the Lord with everything that's going on in your house, with everything that's going on in your mind, will and emotions? You bring all the care before Him. And he reminds you of the truth. He comforts your heart and mind. He gives you wisdom and spiritual understanding. He gives you life. And we begin to speak that out. We begin to say, you know, through the situations and circumstances of life, what we hear our Father saying, what we have heard, what we do no, that's what we speak. Sometimes it can be very hard. But there's nothing too hard for the Lord. In our weakness, God shows himself strong. And there is nothing in your life too hard for the Lord to help you to get through it. There's nothing greater than who he is and his will for your life. His will for your life is peace. His will for your life is goodness. No goodness and mercy are supposed to follow us. But how can they follow us with thoughts of foreboding? How can peace have its way in our hearts and in our lives anywhere where we're so grieved and filled with sorrow? where all we can do is put our hands on our head and say, I just don't know. But the Lord has given us wisdom. And he's given us a revelation of himself. I believe that if we would just put on a worship song or open the Bible and look to the words, sit down and say, Lord, I don't know, but I know that you do, and submit our heart and mind, our will and emotions to the Lord that the funkiness that is going on in your mind will get off of you. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he does not care how he does it. He doesn't have mercy for you. God's the one who has mercy. God has given us his son, and our confession is faith. Faith is our confession. Faith is in who God is, what Christ has done, who Christ is. How do we, uh, Revelation chapter, um, I know we've been there this week, but Revelation chapter 12 again. And by the way, the Lord has not given us a spirit of anxiety, but his spirit, and we are to confess that the Lord has given us the spirit of life. We're supposed to confess that the Lord has given us His Spirit. He's given us love, and perfect love cast out fear. There's a power in this love. The Lord's given us authority through Jesus Christ. There's no weapon formed against us that can prosper because, see, we know our God. That's in Isaiah chapter uh, 
54. And when I think about Isaiah chapter 54, I think about the fact that our Father knows. He knows our hurt. He knows our pain. He knows the trials. He knows whatever we're thinking, whatever we're feeling. He, uh, he knows. But he's saying, look at him. Understand that I'm your husband. Isaiah chapter 54. <laughs> God is our, our father. We're married to the Lord married to the Lord and when we really realize that we're married to him and, and go go after search out that great deep love that he has for us I bet we're going to start saying declaring what he has for us in our lives and it doesn't have to be oh the brand new house or a pair of shoes and sneakers I it, it doesn't have to be a material thing. But there's a peace that surpasses all understanding that will take you farther, higher, deeper, so that you can have that peace that you need while you walk through the storm. If Elijah, is it Eli Elijah? If, if he can go into a cave and wait while an earthquake happens and stand there and wait while the storm passes by but he can stand there and wait till the fire <laughs> that was going past the mouth of the cave he stood there he had to feel every vibration of it and the heat of it and the the torrent of the wind blowing so hard against the mountain he was in a cave closed in there's only an opening there that he was hiding in. And all through all the situation and circumstance, he didn't change his mind about the Father. He didn't change his mind. He didn't start belting out things like, oh, I'm terrified. You, 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 you know, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? He wasn't in the cave saying, what am I going to do? He waited for that still small voice, and when he heard the voice of the Lord, he and he knew this voice, he came out of the cave to hear what the Lord had to say. Okay, back to Revelation chapter 12. Now, we understand that there is a war in heaven, and uh, Satan was cast out with his... Uh, with, with the angels, right, that, that were following him. All of them were cast out. Verse 10 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come the salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of, our, of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. This is how much they gave themselves over to the Lord. This is how much they trusted what God said. This is how much they knew this. They, they, they know the scripture. This is what, we, this is the, to me, this is prophecy. This is prophecy about what has already happened and what we are. How we are to act out our faith. This is how we are to stand. We're supposed to have a revelation of this. We're not supposed to be ignorant of Satan's devices towards us. Therefore, rejoice, you, you, you heavens. And you that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. But how do we overcome him? It is by the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. And by the word 
of our testimony. And the only way to love your life not unto death is to know God and to know Jesus whom he has sent. To know God and to know his son, you won't fear death because you understand that eternity is in the hand of God. The way to eternal life is through the knowledge of the Father and knowing Him, the Father, knowing Him, the Son, and trusting Him with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. There's no greater joy, no greater love, no greater place to be than in God because all of our faith is in Him and what Christ has done for us. As I was walking through the backyard, I was thinking to myself, um, that the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear. The Lord didn't give us a spirit of depression. The Lord didn't give us so many things. But I began to confess what he gave me. He gave me life. He gave me breath. He gave me peace. He gave me rest. If I abide in the word, his word is abiding in me. See, the way to enter the rest of God is to confess what he's done for you. Even though the situations of your life are hard and we don't quite understand them, I don't care to understand it anymore. <laughs> well, the revelation of it, whatever that is, is there for you just as well as it is there for me. But we're not leaning on our own understanding about the situation. We're leaning on the Lord and what he said to us. So when the enemy comes in trying to overwhelm you, what God did say is coming out of your mouth. What God did say is coming up to your mind. The Lord will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will lead you in a plain path. He knows what the will of the enemy is. But he's leading you in a plain path for his name. His namesake. His, his name is imprinted on you. It's, it's invisible, but it's printed on you. We belong to God. Don't allow yourself to get weary in well-doing by ruminating on the situation over and over and over again. Let the Lord of glory, the Lord of hosts, show you His ways. All you have to do is ask. I know it hurts. I know the situation is ridiculous. <laughs> For the Lord of hosts, he sees, he knows, Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there, the holy angels that are there to help you in your life, they're there. And they're able to help you not to fall into sin, into neglect of uh, your faith. As I sit before the Lord and I ask him, or I tell him, Father, I don't know what to do. This is overwhelming. This is too much. Greater is he. That's what comes out of my mouth again. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't abandon God. Because the thought life is too much. I cast the care before the Lord. And his word comes to my remembrance and that's what I confess. Faith is a confession. And God will fulfill his promise in your life. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a material need, even though there are things that are needed. We need to get over the situations so that we can have that clear mind. So we can have that ready mind. Not a strange mind. The Lord is not giving you a strange mind. He's given you a steadfast mind, a sound mind, a clear mind, a ready mind, ready to do his will, ready to live life the way that he's, he's called it, the way he's shaped it, the way he's 
formed it, we're supposed to mirror the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is good, it's not evil. It's peaceful. It's peaceable. <laughs> it's gentle. It's loving. It's it's kind. And when you know, when war happens, the Lord knows how to war. He knows how to fight. He knows how to take care of those situations and circumstances in our lives when it's time for, to war. Believe me, God knows how to war. And he shows us how to war. Right now, we want to learn how to war in the spirit. We want to learn how to submit ourselves to God and war in the spirit. Because this is a fight that's already been won. It's only a matter of time. Don't allow yourself to be weary in your well-doing and your good-doing. Don't allow yourself to be wearied in your mind. It's in Hebrews chapter 12. Look at the author. Look at the finisher. Look at the one who is our faith, the one that we're believing. Jesus went before us. He's paved the way. And we are to walk in it. Walk out your soul salvation in Christ and confess what the Lord has for you. I have the mind of Christ. I have a ready mind. I am blessed <laughs> with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I don't have to confess that, oh, I feel so unwise today. I feel so dumb. Oh, Lord, am I stupid? What's going on here? That's not a confession of faith. There may be a time when you feel like that. But that's a part of taking that care and putting it before the Lord. See, what I do, I'm not doing it just for myself. Yet, oh, how can I describe it? The Lord carries me. Again, I hear this word. I see where it's just a little bit sore. I mean sore. And God wants to take that place in you and just give you rest and give you peace. He wants to lift you up and strengthen you and strengthen the inner man so that you can do the good things you would do. No, I speak light while we're in a dark place to bring us all the way out into the light. <laughs> Pull, I'm, I'm pulling you out of a darkness that is trying to encase itself and close itself around you because we keep staring at the people and staring at the situation. But our faith is the confession of the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he's made available to us in this kingdom of God, in the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of the dear son. All that God has for you is good. I pray that you'll see it. And you begin to confess what the Lord has for you instead of what he doesn't have for you. You can denounce those those high thoughts, you can bring them down and stomp them with the word of God. The Holy Spirit will help you. The angel that was assigned to your life will, will guard you. It will help you. He knows how to fight the fight. He knows how to help you fight. The prayers, your prayers, they do very much. Trust the Lord today with your heart with your mind, with all that you're going through. Bring care to the Lord, but lift up the word of God. Jesus gave us life and life more abundantly. We don't have to keep, keep saying, well, you know, that the enemy's busy. I don't like that word. You know, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, that devil sure is a liar. We talk, we confess a lot of the trouble. But when will we 
have faith as our confession, the faith of, toward God, the faith that has done everything for us, took away our sins, delivered us from, from death and disease and darkness, chaos and confusion. When will we believe in the one who took us out of the filth of life, out of the wickedness of the world? When will we stand up and begin to confess what the Lord has for us? Jesus gave us life and life more abundantly. We're seated in him in the heavenly realm and we need to begin to speak what the Lord has spoken to us. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Get the word in your face and love God because he surely does love you. Bye-bye.